We yeah. got Lorianne Gibson in the oh, building. Yeah. Choreographer, actress, producer, author. I mean, this th- th- this lady is something so special. It's crazy, so, man. I told her we wrote up together, and I was just telling her, I was like, holy shit, I didn't know you were a fly girl. And it's like, dude, her history. It's crazy. It's, cra- it's crazy. And yeah. the tentacles of people she's been involved with yeah. and created with and curated. It's bananas. So yeah. I can't. Wait, you know, me being such a fan of dance and theater. And oh, I saw you. You like Bob Fosse. Yeah. yeah Yo, know. I actually, I, I'm not really a big dance fan, but I do fuck with Bob Fosse. Who man. doesn't? Bob Fosse was an amazing, amazing filmmaker, he was man. fucking brilliant. Star 80 was genius. All That Jazz yeah. was genius. All that jazz. The Lenny movie he made was genius. He's so great. he's the, 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 the originator of Spirit Fingers is what you're saying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's it. definitely. <laughs> jazz Bob Fosse? Jazz oh, yeah, yeah. He was always like that. Jazz but he hands. would do the... The best is Roy Scheide from Jaws. Bobby Jazz Played hands. him in all that jazz. Yeah. It's and he would just like fucking swallow all these benzos, all these pills, yeah. and he was just looking very big. Showtime, right? When he say it's, it's showtime? It's, it's showtime. It's showtime. Yeah. So yeah. sick. So we got Lorianne. That's yep. going to be dope. And then we got one of our homies, Beck Lovers, in town. And, uh, you know, I think Mr. every time. Mr. New York. Mr. Mr. New, New York. York. He's like the uh, unofficial king of uh, Albanian nightlife. Yes. But he's just got crazy, controversial point of views on shit. So I'm like, bro, why don't we do like little 10 minute segments with Beck Lover, you know? Why not? Considering he said that, like, basically his own podcast created so much up- upheaval. I was like, great, come in and mix up ours and right. let's see what the fuck you got to say. Hopefully about we won't something. get canceled. I don't know what he's going to talk about. Let's just hear him out and let's hear him rant. Yes, so let's let's get it. at it, man. You know what I'm saying? Welcome yes, to the Cray. Cray Cray. What's happening is we're always shooting at the Cray and Sean is simultaneously editing at the Cray. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of what's going that's on. Not, uh, it's, like, it's a collapse. Yeah. There's, like, there's, it's true well, to like an ten, extent. I think like 10 times an episode, like me and O'Neill will like look at him and he'll just be like, it's, it's, it won't be in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I love when he do. He's like, it, it, none of that would be, be in there. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Break that down to me. What are you responsible for protecting? Uh, well, he's got to protect canceled. my fucking yeah, exactly. Career. Yeah. But, but well, listen, and I by the way, that, but, we, but listen, we, I'm, we, not, we I'm, I'm honest with you. I'm not even crazy about protecting my own career Thank in a you. weird way. I'm like, fuck you, like right. the cancel culture. But. I am protective over the fact that I got to raise a five year old kid, and I just don't oh, want to do it, bro. You, you know what I mean? Always protect but that. you know yeah, what? Like I got schools to pay yes. for. I got his mom to like. Right. Check like one, that. two, three, four. I love a fuzzy fuzzy. <laughs> I love a big fuzzy zhuzh. Can you hear me, Daddy? Yeah, that's, giving thumbs that's, up. That's, I gotta tell you, it's kind of fire, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what any of it means, <laughs> but, but it I started mean, sweating again. I know you started blushing. Your cheeks got rosy. You did start blushing. Your cheeks got rosy, right? Well, you know what it is. It's like. Cheeks, you know, my love language is sound. Oh, oh. no, it's not right. really. Okay, I guess <laughs> it's but it's, you're <laughs> in. You know, yes. actually, my love language is gifts, but that's yeah. just me. You know, I, I mean, love but. sound. But listen, no, you have an amazing the voice. Sound you make when you oh, no, make Lorian, like that best. voice just now yeah, is it's like soothing. there was yeah, I just kind of like yeah, part of my body edgy. sweat like. Like yeah. it just kind of just yeah. gave in. Yeah. I let go yeah. and I it is I took I bought the ticket and took the ride. Yeah. Oh yeah. baby, <laughs> yeah, oh, I like it, man. I do well, too. We don't need yeah. us. We got Lorianne do yeah. all our voiceover work for all our ads. We, we gotta have Lorianne just. No, we don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, you guys go get go get milkshakes or something. <laughs> we'll be back next episode. <laughs> nice. Give me Keep a call. Keep rolling though. though. But we got Lorianne. Keep rolling. So I met Lorianne at your. And Russell, the, oh, the, the Gush together. Cloud dinner. Yep, yep, yep. I yeah. met Lorianne in 1996. Ooh, wow. we sure did. Yeah, 1996. I met Lorianne. Uh, a lot of people may not know this, and I, you know, as Sean uh, would say, we can edit this out. When I met Lorianne, she was dating my cousin Andre Harrell. Oh, really? Okay, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, and yeah. why would you edit that? Exactly. I, I mean, but, she might yeah, why would you? Rest in some, peace, some man. Some private. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't oh, mean, for her benefit. For, for her saying. benefit. Gotcha. You know what I mean? You know. But when I met Lorianne, it was uh, uh, my first time in the Hamptons. I never forget. Lorianne was coming down the stairs. She had on this Lacoste like little tennis outfit, <laughs> right? And and like these little canvas sneakers, and she had like this little short haircut like kind of like the I call it the Holly Berry style yeah. was and it September I don't know no I think it was August I didn't August. know if it, I thought, I thought yeah. maybe she was repping for the US Open oh, or something man, you know I mean, man. maybe no. but we were in the Hamptons yeah. and I never forget she came down the stairs and I was like <laughs> oh my gosh she is so 
fucking cute. Yeah. And she just was edgy. And I remember after I moved to New York and Andre was like, he, he kind of like, you know, sent me around the circle of people to intern for, to be around. Right. And, I, and big shout out to Jason Weaver. I remember going to that uh, dance uh, studio with Lorianne and Jason Weaver. And it was me, Jason Weaver, Punch, and Goof. Oh right. And Lorianne made us run up and down the stairs, up and down the stairs. And she, I remember her saying, <laughs> if you want it, it's not free. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I love that. Yeah, she was like, you want it, it's not free. And I was like, oh my God, this bitch is crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's inspiring, but man. That's it. like, that's yeah, I loved, like, loved it. Love strong, it. strong voice, man. Yeah. You know, push, pushing, you know? No, Lorian. That's the way I feel like my teachers were when I was at the Edge Dance Studio and uh, I was taking my hip hop class. This, excuse me. They would always, oh, I'm kidding, I'm joking. No, oh, that's right. not editing. I was like, the what? The Edge? No, First kidding. of all, what do you know about the Edge? Well, no, I had an ex girlfriend. You dated some girl from the Edge. Of course you did. That's what it was. I saw the whole thing flash. No, like, I was like, when I was young, I felt like I could dance a little bit, like I could move a little bit, but I think it was based in, like, like cocktail consumption, you know what I mean? It was like it, that's the where more like you drank, the more yes, you the more loose. loose I got. But yeah. then you cross over the the line of drinking too much, and then you're just a little too loose. And yeah. You kind of yeah. ma matrixy where you fall right. over and shit. Yeah. Where your muscles have no control. That's never a good you know? look. That's never a yeah. good look. But I mean, so going back but to the beginning, there is that magical place where if it's the you sweet can spot. do it, I mean, the sweet about the spot matrix shit. is the reality. And that's where I can really dance a little bit. Like I think if I learned, like if I would get together with you, yes. Somewhere quiet well, we can... with music, and, you know what I mean. I'm and sure like, a lot of things right happen kind of of light and vibe. No, but Must I do think lighting. I do think I do think like if somebody taught like took ten minutes to teach me something, I, would I could dance. Totally yeah. take ten minutes to teach you. Not only thank you, thanks. Your dance, yes. But the dance of what of. The dance of life. Everything's yeah. got really awkwardly quiet. <laughs> I know. I'm and, like, I'm, and I'm like, you, 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 you two mother. I mean, no, you two guys. Here, Jesus. Here, there is, I mean, there is an interesting I'm spark not, going across. Oh, great. Oh, oh, there we go. go. Yo, I don't usually I do make love a white comments. Boy. I was <laughs> making a joke, but I'm like, so many. I don't remember the last time I saw Rob sweating like this. Yeah, I know. So many. No, it's hot. It's hot. So many girls DM me and was like, Yo, what's up with Rob Weiss? I'm like. Yeah. What? what? He, that's my brother. You know. He, 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 yeah, he it, can't believe that women are attracted to me. Basically, it's what he said last week. If somebody said, "Oh, he's sexy," and he goes, "Rob Weiss is sexy," and it's like, it's a totally listen. Sexy. It's a good thing you don't find it's me that sexy. One sleep. Because we would have like a weird relationship. We have a weird relationship. Yeah. This yeah. Interview yeah I'm not, by the way, I'm not on a problem with men oh, finding oh, no. me sexy, no, no. but you know, we have a different kind of rapport. No, I was at Zara. I just don't want it to go to that place. You know. Exactly. I was at Zara the other day and I walked down. No, he's hilarious. I was at Zara the other day. And I had on this sweatsuit, and I Genius. came out, and I was looking at myself, uh -huh. and this guy stepped over. He said, "Oh my God, you're gorgeous," and I was like, "Right, yeah, thanks." Comfortable yeah. with yeah. that, yeah, yeah. yeah. You See, have I'd, to be I'd hug him. Man. Man. Yeah, go. <laughs> I'd probably be like, "Oh, really? Well, yeah. well here's the kickball yeah. change. Yeah, yeah. Here's the kickball change. Are yeah. you gonna be comfortable with it, or are you gonna let other people define?" That's true. Of course, Anything. right? Should, definitely. Meaning, yeah. you should absolutely be comfortable. Totally. With your fine, of course, yeah. Even yeah. if your version of fine is unique. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have yeah. to be comfortable with it. I want yeah. a confident man. He's confident. That's right. I got. It. I, it's crazy because, like, you know, I come from, like, super kind of. I mean, man, I'm not gonna start talking about like ta yes. toxic masculinity, but my old man was like fucking uber machismo, fucking Brooklyn dude, like straight up guy like that. All my friends growing up were like kind of like alpha gangster in their own way too. And you got members like Brooklyn then to suburbs, right? I went to art school in Manhattan. I went to Parsons, right? So I, I'm talking like mid to late 80s I went there. Parsons? <laughs> I would have never clocked yeah. you for a Parsons. Yo, nobody does. It's crazy. That's amazing. It's actually, I'm listed on there, like they have an esteemed alumni uh -huh. thing on like Wikipedia, and it, sa it says all the people that went there. And that says Rob Weiss, parentheses, thrown out of film school. <laughs> no. no, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't. Yeah. That's How sick is that? That's amazing. What? Well, because I was so Why basically were you thrown out. Um, it's a crazy fucking story. I want to get into more about you, but I'll tell this story anyway, and I hope he doesn't cut it out, this motherfucker over here. <laughs> why would you but cut why have I become like the, 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 the edit? Yeah, yeah, like the, the, the executioner. Like I just cut over there. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. evil Sean, editor. Sean went to work on my story. <laughs> oh my God, no, so Sean, basic, basically, I like I said, you know, the first year of Parsons is like a foundation year. You're trying to figure out what you want to do. Like for me, I always loved clothes, and I was like, "Shit, I want to, I want to make shit." But my, I wanted to be like Ralph Lauren, you know what I mean? I didn't want to make evening wear. 
I want to make shit for me and my friends, you know, stuff like that. And I was really into like Italian, like, you know, linen yeah. and sweaters and stuff like that. So I got into fashion just based off of the fact that I would do all these designs of like prints and shit I wanted to make. And when I got into the fashion department, they were like, no, we do women's evening wear. And I'm like, oh, okay. So now I'm like trying to like drape muslin for dresses. <laughs> and like it did not work at all, right? It was really funky. But the craziest yeah. thing that happened in there, and this story I might have told, um, a girl in my class was, I was reading the book Lesson Zero. And I don't read a lot, and I definitely didn't read a lot in school, but for whatever reason, Lesson Zero, Maybe the fact I knew they were making it into a movie with some of these Brat Pack kids at the time. It was like Andrew McCarthy, Robert Downey right. Jr. But I'm like, I want to read this. Sounds really cool. And I was reading it, and a girl in my class came over to me. And she's like, she was like, oh, my dad's producing that as a movie. And I was like, oh, I want to be in it, or I, I want to go work on it. And she was like, if you want to be in movies, what are you doing in this class? And this is like a fashion class. And I was like... I was like, yeah, Good man, she might have yeah. a point. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, so <laughs> at the end of the semester, they basically asked me to leave like fashion because like I didn't measure up. And I was like, all right. I took some time off to be a club promoter. But when I went back, I was really getting invested in making movies and storytelling and stuff like that. So Amazing. I went back to the film school and it was like bumpy because like, like I'm not a polished guy. Like I don't think anybody's ever growing up it was always like, yo, this guy's a fucking idiot. In my private school, with all these kids, they'd be like, this guy's the dumbest guy in school. I just didn't apply myself. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So Actually. even after I made a movie, one of my friends hit up another kid I graduated high school with and was like, maybe I said this guy couldn't even fucking write his name. The guy just literally wrote a movie that, you know, fucking crushed at Sundance. So, exactly. I'm going to bring myself to tears. I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm joking. I got something caught in my throat. So um, so anyway, I go to this. I go to the film school there. First semester is kind of right. Second semester is just like, there were like people of all different ages in the class. I was probably like 21, 22. There was some guy with just a bad fucking attitude. He was probably like late 20s. And what they do is they assign you to each other's crews, right? Okay. So I'm going to go make a short film. Uh -huh. And they're like, you're going to be a cinematographer. You'll be his AD. You'll star Copy. in it. Like everybody just right. kind of goes around. Yeah. So they made me like his camera operator. Somebody goes, he's like, I'll load the film the night before. You know what I mean? Like, look at me like I was incapable. And I was like, cool, whatever. So I just had a bad vibe with the guy. Right. So. You beat him up? So I'm getting oh to it. So God. basically. Come on, man. He called it. it. She spirit. saw it coming. Damn. I'm getting you to the story. Come on, baby. So basically we do an in-class uh -huh. kind of shoot, tech shoot. And some woman's like, I'm directing. And another woman's like, I'm doing this and that. Some guy's like, I'm doing this and that. I'm just kind of standing there like, my teacher at the time was like just a doc teacher, but he, he was kind of a douchebag in his own way. So he's just watching <laughs> us go down and he's like, you're going to act in it. Or she's like, you're going to act in it. And I'm like, all right. And then they look at this guy who was a douchebag to me and they're like, you're going to act in it too. And I'm like, all right, what's the scene? And they're like, they were like, you're a drug dealer and you're coming to collect money from him. And I was like, oh, I could do this scene. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're running the scene and literally it's like a table like this, uh, right? The camera's right there. It's just like a shot on him. And then like I come walking out, I don't even know what the shot is. Like I walk into frame on an angle and like they're just covering me talking to him at the table and then I'm supposed to go around him. But we didn't really, we didn't really block out the scene, oh, right. right? So... I come in, you know, I'm like, like, I don't know how to act, but I'm like, you know, I got like fucking probably had so much anxiety. All these people are looking at me trying to perform and there's a camera on me. And I'm like, you know, I come in, I'm like, uh, yeah, where's the money? He's like, I don't have the money. Oh, well, you know what I mean? <laughs> However he's doing it. I'm like, well, you better get the fucking money. You know, like, it's just improv. It's not like really scripted. Ooh, I just and he's like, hot. he's like, you need to like <laughs> chill out. Like, you know, in his version, he's like, you need to chill out uh -huh. or I'm going to call your boss. And I was like could call him the only prop on the desk was like a rotary like phone you know oh whatever God. so i'm like call him <laughs> so then he goes over he's like i have him here for the money and i was like oh you're gonna call my boss and i go up behind him i think this actually precedes goodfellas or maybe i just pulled the move from goodfellas uh -huh. but i just go take the phone and just kind of wrap it around his head like just like the cord but i really didn't even pull he immediately goes into panic Throws a desk, she's like, get the fuck off me, right? And I was like, fuck you, motherfucker, or something. 
the next day they're like, when I improv rolled goes desk. too far. Yes, it just. Yeah. Well, I hated him anyway. Keeping it real so goes wrong. Me. But there's like Meisner. a pause. So basically, <laughs> yes. my teacher, my teacher goes nuts. He's like, get the hell out of my classroom. Uh. You save your violence for the streets. This and I'm like. I was like, uh, all right, right. So the funniest thing is the funniest is, so now I'm like out of class. I'm like angry. I hate everybody. I <laughs> snuck back into the school with a friend of mine. That's hilarious. Who thought he was an actor, you know, and we snuck in and we got like the footage and we watched it on like a movieola, which is like you'd crank it and watch it. And my friends look at me, he's like, this is nothing. If, if we were in Hollywood, a director would have been like, I need more, Rob. I need more from you. <laughs> so cut to, I go to Sundance. Literally a year later, I go, as uh, as they throw me out of school, uh, I'm like, I'm going to go make a feature. The guy's like, yeah, yeah. The the teacher, literally the teacher's like, yeah, yeah, dickhead, shoot it in 70 millimeter. Like, this is literally how far this thing the, the, like goes down. I'm like fighting with teachers, shit like this. I go and make Amongst Friends. Like, totally inspired like, to, to, to give the ultimate fuck you. I'm just going to be like 23 shooting a movie. I do it. He made a film at Sundance sarcastically, and it ended up becoming really good. No, there were a lot of reasons for it, but that, that was definitely part incredible. of it. <laughs> so I'm at Sundance. Some guy comes up to me, and he goes, hey, I know a guy from New Jersey. And he was looking at the, the Sundance booklet of the movies in competition, and he said, if you're the Rob Weiss he thinks you are, He's going to kill himself. And I go, who's that? And he tells me the name of the guy, and it's the guy I choked with the phone cord. No. That's and I go, oh, yeah, fun, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell him to kill himself. I was like, I'm That's exactly right. who the fuck it is. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, he's going to die. I was like, it is what it is, it man. Is. You know? Did he yeah. die? No. Oh. no. Oh, oh, my never know. God. You never know. Curious. Curious. It was curious. It was very curious. cinematic in New England. This might yeah. be a two-part. This might yeah. turn. Now, we have to yeah, yeah. talk about our guests. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like I got so much off my The Chronicles of Rob Weiss. Like, it's like therapy. I feel like I was your therapist or some shit. <laughs> Bro, I was talking like so hard Hollywood story. that my gum disintegrated. Nice. Commitment. I Commitment. think this might be like some organic Erwan gum. It's not really gum. It doesn't have gum inside yeah. the gum. Yeah. Oh, it's just some like... Erwan gum? Yeah, just dissolved. I'm like talking. That's why I was like choking. Yeah, it's like rabbit testicles no. or something. It's like, you know, oh, my <laughs> man. <laughs> but anyway, yes, that was like my experience. I don't even know how the fuck we got into it. No, I think that that is exactly how we got into it because I'm in the room and I'm full of magic. No, there you go. Well, yeah, we'll I think pull the magic. I you are, for sure, ma'am. Re- represent anti-system. That's yes. probably why we Speaking of tragic, magic. You know what I mean? Anti-system. Right now. Yeah. And that's what we're But you've existed, advised. but it's crazy because you've not only existed within one system, but multiple systems, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it, or at least institutions, right? Well, like, I don't know that I existed within it. I It, it existed because of me. And right. I think that a part of being a real artist or a real visionary is when that system stops you from being authentic to that gift that calling that passion right. that truth that you got to break out you know what i mean you've right. got to trust that thing that's in you but don't you think that's like so much of what's going on in the world right now that i don't even think it's necessarily that people are being limited to what they can and say do you know that's do right. but it's the fear that's right of like doing the wrong thing saying the wrong thing creating the wrong thing Fear. That's kind of stifled people. A thousand. It's a, a fear is absolutely what they're selling. And then artists like myself and obviously like the Cray and everything that you're doing and we're all doing has to be evidence of another option. Right. We have the freedom to choose. We'll never lose that. Not right. in America, not today, right. not tomorrow, right? But, but what keeps you fearless though? You know, I've known you for a long time and I've watched <laughs> the turbulent road. Turbulent yeah. is right. <laughs> but but what keeps Lorianne Gibson grounded? The little Canadian girl that came to New York City with a dream, bright eyed, because we've seen it all. We were there She's when. She's still bright eyed. Yeah, still bright eyed. <laughs> Song <laughs> alert. Yeah. I'm still like, no, bright eyed. We've had many female guests, but he, he, he doesn't act Song like Song alert. Like yeah, this, this is. Like he's this. never. I, I love I've them. never seen him act like this anywhere. I don't think, I, this I, I don't think I've ever conducted myself as inappropriately as I have today. I've never been inappropriate about it. But it's not inappropriate. It's exactly just We're joking because I'm being like outwardly flirty and. You're and, and, you're I'm not really blushing, but I am hot in here. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. Well, but, feelings yeah. mutual. Yeah. Well, we're both in like Exciting. black crew neck hoodie. Exactly. You know, uh, sure, I'm sure it's the black crew neck stuff. Yeah, we're, we're both, both toasty. Yeah. But no, yeah. seriously though, how how do you <laughs> how do you continue to stay fearless in a climate where being fearless is so censored, so monitored? 
I think when I was young, for some reason, and obviously, uh, you know, it goes deeper, uh, but I always said to myself, I never wanted to die a version of myself. I could not exist a version of myself. So that continues to create this fight in me. And I have a passion that burns bigger than anyone's opinion of myself. So I am fearless because when I feed that passion, I feel full. I and feel is whole. that like a passion to like constantly evolve? Yes, like to and yourself? to create that full feeling in myself. So what happens is if I'm oppressed or somebody tells me you can't move to New York at 18 and, and pursue dancing, well, the option to that doesn't make me right. happy. But who doesn't said you couldn't me- do that? The world, the system, oh, other gotcha, people's gotcha. parents. Right, uh, right, right. Well, the odds that were against me. I was Canadian. I was right. illegal. I didn't have right. enough money. All of those things are legitimate reasons not course, to let course, your child jump on a bus, yes. right? But what was burning, what was more incredibly fulfilling was the dream, was the passion I had to get to New York to right. dance. Right. And when I danced, you couldn't tell And me. where's your first stop when you get there? Was it Alvin Ailey? I read that. It like, was Alvin Ailey, that, yes. Isn't that kind of like the go-to for everybody? Isn't that like kind for, of like... Black. <laughs> no, but it is like, well, it's now, like a yes, standard, it's right? Well, like, now, it's now, like yeah. that kind of dance troupe where you look at, like it's like going to Strasbourg for an actor, That right? part is yeah. the most incredible training. Obviously, when I was 12, I went to see a performance my mother took me to at the O'Keefe right. Center in Toronto, and it was Alvin Ailey. And right. prior to that, I was taking ballet classes, and I was the only black girl right. in a class, and Mr. Christopher said, oh, your feet are too flat, your thighs are too thick. Right. I was like, well, these thick thighs. Well, it sounds like me, bro. It actually sounds like me. Exactly. I don't thick thighs, but And I like you, I looked at him and I yeah. was like, oh, not today. Yeah. My thighs are what they are. You want me to what, cut my thighs in half? Like right. that, the option right. wasn't an option for But me. that's, baby, you know what? So you were around when shit was icy. You know what Very I mean? Like, icy. We, and icy we, behind I, your I'm back. I'm older than you, but I yeah. grew up on like, Icy culture, like That's like right. like watching the show Fame, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The movie with Irene Cara, that yeah. whole thing, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, yo, they were they were ruthless. Like people, like at, at even acting studios in New York, people just look at you, and go, you, you have no yeah. talent, you're not yeah. gonna exactly. make it. You know, you exactly. hear all the stories. Now it's like, just fucking be nice, right? Be kind, right. Kill them, whatever. Right. I don't know, but even and like just cu- I'm saying culturally, wrong. yeah, the, yeah. And I that think that's wrong, is wrong also because yeah. like, right. listen, everybody's got an opinion. Like I remember somebody telling Dustin Hoffman, you'll never make it as an actor, right? That was like one of those stories that's floating around out there as kind of like, you know, actors to go like, don't listen to them. Look what they yeah. told Dustin Hoffman, yeah. right? <laughs> but then there's also other people that like may suck at things who are going to throw years at their life at it, probably never really get good. I don't think you should shit on people's dreams, but it is kind of okay if you're close with them to be like, yo, you know, you should like, you should... <laughs> Do some other shit, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like have a backup maybe, plan. Yeah, like I tell everybody now, like people getting into entertainment, I'm like, do everything. Because when I got into entertainment, it was like if you were like a filmmaker, or writer, director, and you were like, hey, I'm also, I have a marketing company, they'd be like, he's not serious about his craft. <laughs> right. You know, I also have a restaurant, like, he's not really a writer director he has a restaurant like it was like the people were fucking nuts back then now I'm like do everything that you could fit into a fucking day and like have just a super vertical life that makes you happy and full and make dough and like yeah, I, wish, the, I wish they taught us that when we, right. like me. Well, they didn't because we, we were we the architects yeah. of where we are now, right? right and right. we were leaders. So You're right. I'm going to take some fucking to, credit for this shit. Yeah, we I had to carry a, the burden my of disdain. that architect. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was like my disenfranchised nature that right. got us to this fucking That's place. what I'm saying. Right. This day of reckoning. Thank God you yeah. survived it. But, but even, yeah. even, even with, with, with Mr. Christopher. And flourished in the survive, man. Even with Mr. Christopher saying that your feast are crisp. Yeah. Your thighs are too big. Um, obviously, you, you 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 have a warrior spirit. Yes. But who was fueling that? So you know, when I, when I see my daughter, I have a five year old. Obviously, you know, okay. and I have a, a four month old. When I see my daughter being discouraged, uh, you know, with life, it's my job to then step in and say, "No, Maddie, let's try it again. No, Maddie, let's yeah. X, Y, and Z." Who was that voice in your life when, you know, Mr. fuck Mr. Christopher, but, you know, God bless him, wherever you I love how Mr. Christopher's uh, become uh, a supporting role in this. Yeah, he's a character. Yeah. But, 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 you know, 
that's a lot to you know because we look up to adults and, and a lot of times when adults say things it's not you know a, 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 an opinion it's, it's it's factual it's carved in stone so who was like no Lori you got this I think, well, first of all, I come from Jamaican parentage, and one thing you have to know about Jamaicans is the truth is better than anything, right? Almost to a degree. My mother is Jamaican, and I the truth, you. you want the truth, you're going to get the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth. And I love that. That's yeah. A, yeah. So that's like a big part of that of is that transparency. Household. Yes. It's and that. Dope. The imperfections are your perfections, you know? So obviously I had a right. strong mo mother who, when she was young, she wanted to uh, make dresses. She wanted to be a fashion designer. Right. And her mother was like, that's not a real job. Yeah. So when she had kids, she said, I don't care at whatever cost. I'm not going to tell my children yeah. that they can't do what they're feeling inside. They're yeah. passionate mm -hmm. about. So as you say, when Maddie asks you, and you can't talk about Maddie and my eyes not get wet, <laughs> it is imperative that you speak to the strength in your child and right. not the weakness, especially as a girl. Yeah. Because right. the one thing that we hang on to is our parents' version of our beauty, right. our father's interpretation of our beauty, right. our mother's security in her own beauty. And if there is insecurity, then that is how we will grow as women. Yes. The consistency of your reaction creates confidence. Right. And a balanced human being who doesn't fear the truth when they go into the world. Right. I never feared the truth because when Mr. Christopher said it, I was right. like, that's not my truth. Right. See, I, I have like, feared that's the truth. That's my not life. my truth. I don't fear the truth anymore, but I think in my life, like, there's definitely been but insecurities made... where I would not want to hear the truth. Well, that's only because really? the you know? rejection you experienced yeah. earlier as yeah. an artist built up that fear. But I never was crazy is I never really experienced any rejection. No, like, I mean the stuff that problem. you had to yeah. fight yeah. around. That, that's, like yeah. the stuff you had to fight through, like the school throwing you out. I think like the guy making me feel like I was incapable of loading which, by the way, he might as he might have been right. No, he wasn't. You just, not you just no, he wasn't because you I, were I never destined I to figured. do that. Was that going to be your passion? You're right. I was never. Exactly. I didn't, I didn't want to be a camera That's operator or a fucking assistant exactly. camera. Right. So people like us, every time we got to fight some system, yeah. it right. might not be openly insecurity, but they right. are wounds that you build up some question. You're only human. Right. And I understand that. I identified that as I started to build superstars. I mean, I was like. Is it that bad right. that a black girl's behind a pop star? Like, what yeah. am I missing? Right. Is it that bad that every time I show up, you right. never lose? Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. where the game, the numbers on the board, like right. the receipts don't lie. Is it that bad? I had to search myself right. when I faced a male oppressive system that was intimidated. Right. So, yes. And who those is that? Is that is that the managers, the people who are like? Tr like yeah, pretending the, to curate the artist, it is but are so concerned that they'll lose their artist right. to you. Yeah. The power. Yeah. Yeah. Instead, yeah, I don't want to do that. I never wanted yeah. to do that. I yeah. just wanted to do what I signed up to do. And make it better. But I didn't know the game. Right. Yeah. I didn't understand Me it. neither. I didn't right. understand the yeah. game until like, you know, I was deep into no. the fucking so, so, game. Yeah. yeah, I still don't understand. Right. It's like, they no, change it all the uh, fucking time. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, oh, the game changed. We do understand. Like, oh, I didn't, I didn't we get are the, fucking the game, memo. Rob. We yeah. are the game. Yeah. So, so for our yeah, we are exactly yeah, for, for our listeners out there, just to just, just to run some of these names off. Obviously, there are too many people to count. But off the top of your head, who are some of the people that we know that you've worked with? Uh, I well, do hate this, but, but no, I will, I'll, I'll say for sure. I mean, she incredible. First off, the amount of awards she's been nominated for. VMAs, you want a VMA. Uh -huh. All with, those are with Lady Gaga. But yeah. like even looking at the earlier days of Nicki Minaj yeah. and like where you started and how you built, I'm like, holy shit. I mean, there's fucking names on there that like I was like, I want to hear him. I want to hear him. I want, I want you okay. to say. Well, I just didn't want to put like, her on blast. I want to put her on blast. Some of the people that you work with that were some of our listeners, because you know, in our industry, being a, a stylist, uh -huh. Our names get mentioned very small. <laughs> if so at all. If, if so at all. You, you see them look good. You see them dance yeah. well. And you're like, wow, such and such is it looks great. Such and such can dance well. But name some of those people. I just want to hear them. Well, I always say a true superstar is someone that has the grace to not only acknowledge their team, but understand that the power in you needs a team so that you can sustain 
being an icon or being a superstar, you know? With that being said, uh, obviously Katy Perry, Nicki Minaj, Lady Gaga, um, Puff Daddy, Missy Elliott, the Jonas Brothers, uh, Demi Lovato, Machine Gun Kelly, the Dixie Chicks, <laughs> um, Michael Jackson, um, oh my God, the list does go on. Eh, 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 yeah. So many. Oh and I think God. that's yeah. I think it's important no. for our listeners to 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 one Mary J. Blige, see, see a woman like yourself. <laughs> Snoop, hey Snoopy. Mm-hmm. Who else? Keep going. Um, Young Thug. Uh, personally working with the incredible. I love her so much, Meg The Stallion. Um, I heard that new so hottie much. sauce is really good. It's so good. What is it? Like hot sauce? Hot she sauce? made yeah. this new sauce for Popeye. Oh, yeah, I saw yeah, Martin eating. Great. People are like raving about it's it. Delicious. Like they're like, yo, it's the best, it's yeah. the best sauce ever. So, so I good. Try but that yes, out. the list does go on. And I, and unfortunately, unfortunately, but unfortunately, you know, I do hate that question because yeah. it is. It's like educating people based on what you've done or your art versus the ability it's, that you, know, you have. It's a, but you it's know? a shortcut because yeah. they go like, when you could, when you could list twenty people that you've choreographed for or done various creative endeavors with, and they go like, oh, I fuck with that person, I fuck with that person, I fuck with that person. Ultimately, they're like, holy shit, I really fuck with your work, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So okay. for me, in, in a way, I'm only as good as the shit I've done in the past. But everybody's always like, what's next? And you're like, well, I'm working on this. Yeah, what else? It's like, dude, leave me the fuck alone. You know? Yeah, yeah like, and even that for you, narrative. It's past. For me, it's future. No, like, and they, me they too. Need to know, yeah. Well, you know, and me too. And when they, they don't educate themselves, you go, oh, that's funny, because I just actually uh, launched the first ever uh, Netflix of dance, Bop. Born yes. out of passion. I have my own network for dance. It's going to be incredible. Yeah, All what, so dance. what is the announcement I saw? Ooh. I saw something. Oh, probably yesterday. So I did also a deal with uh, Catalina. And Catalina is headed by, obviously, the genius Jeff Collins, who did Dance Moms. I did right. Dance Moms. I've been on television as right. well. So you think you can dance, Dance Moms. Right, right. My own shows, obviously, Making the Band. Yeah. A slew of them. So we did this incredible deal together, and we created this show that I'm super excited about called The Icon. Right. Which is really a competition about what we're talking about my methodology like anyone's nice. born to sing but are you right. built to be an icon right. Right. And Ooh, like that's that. the future for these young artists because they're online searching right. for intention or why right. I don't know why I want to do this so I don't know how to create from my why no one's properly developing me. When you talk about the music industry, we talk about Andre, Motown, we talk about the Rolling Stones, we talk about Led Zeppelin, we talk about my first album, which was Meatloaf, Dashboard Light. Yo, sick Production, sick artistry. Yeah. We talk about development, and it's okay. You go in the studio, you make a record. It's like writing a script. You're gonna need time to experience that record yeah. and carry the capacity. So well, when people it, buy a not, ticket, not the same, they go and see an the artist. Systems, right. The yeah. system's just, it's, but the you system said it today, is you bullshit. indicted it all. The system's not the same. Well, the, the it should be responsible to artists, cons- Yes, it's, it's money. Like, you have to know as an artist, you have to do your research. I mean, now it's like managers put themselves out there to be as famous as their fucking clients. I'm yeah. not even gonna reference certain people. <laughs> and you look at it, yeah. you know what I mean? Like the whole thing is just become like a fucking clout game. Yeah, that's right. And like the artistry, I think like, I listen, I love so much about what's going on just in pop culture in general between art and music and fashion. fashion There's so yeah. much great stuff happening right now. So I'm not saying it sucks. But what I'm saying well, is it's very fast. the sustainability is questionable. It moves, ve- right. It moves very mm-hmm. fast. And that's the same thing as saying, yeah. how is it going to sustain? And I just don't feel like the best is always rising. You know what I mean? Mm. But I feel like <coughs> what's hyped the most rises the most, you know? So, I mean, I think time will shake it out, like what you're saying. I do um, too. And also, like the Cray, an option for someone who's sitting at home with a burning passion to do what you've done, what O'Neill's done, what Sean's right. done. By the way, Sean, I love your eyebrows. They're oh, fucking thank amazing. You. Thank you. Um, I, I have and nice eyebrows. Who's no, hearing no, the no, cray no. and is in search of a decoded conversation. Yes. Right. Yes. And that's what we pride ourselves in. We pride ourselves in. Yeah. Uh, we're we're like, de- we're decoded. You yeah, but we're and, decoded and light. You yeah. know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I mean, like, I think like, you know, none of us like had ever really done this. I think O'Neill had a radio show, but I've yeah. never like hosted a podcast. We're only 14 episodes in. We're still like uh kind of developmental stage where we're learning how to have a rhythm with one another but but also I think we have to build it 
and like build our foundation and build it strong before we get fucking totally annihilated <laughs> by the system that's right. that surrounds it. Because right now they could extinguish us rather quickly. We're <laughs> yeah. not we're not like a household entity. You know what I mean? Like we're not. But totally, you are, they also need the option because yeah. when you have a select brand that you know produces high end people will pay for it because of right. what it gives them, right? Yes. right. And Absolutely. you want that as a marketing tool. Absolutely. You want to create the next narrative. Right. You don't want to be stuck. This algorithm is stuck. Right. And until we inject it with a new perspective, they'll go, oh, add that to the algorithm. Yep. And now we're just adding an option. So right. we got to speak to the truth of where Gen Z is, right. where we are, and why we're where we are, right? We yep. can dominate just by a conversation. We can dominate with one form of art. We can dominate with one performance right. that can truly affect them emotionally. Not just when the artist is like walking back and forth in an outfit, look at me, look at me. Yeah. Well, what is the ticket buyer getting out of that? Right. Nothing. That's why when you do see someone, like when Snoop still walks on stage, right. All ages go crazy. Yep. They don't yeah. even understand well, what that feeling is like. That's true. Last when night, Beyonce goes on stage, everyone, everyone still goes yep, crazy. Yep, yep. So we could argue it on down. Jay opens his mouth. We're all yeah. y'all are going crazy yep. again, no matter what. Well, you right? said the Every Jonas time. Brothers last night. I was literally like, I was like, me and my kid were hanging out in my bed. It's like nine o'clock, and I'm cheering. <sighs> yeah, like, literally uh -huh. from the Hollywood Bowl to my house. Wow. The bros. Five minutes later. That's like right. people are going crazy. I'm like, Jonas Brothers. I'm like, who the fuck is at the bowl tonight? I go, I, like the eruption uh -huh. of cheers. So so often, I looked up. It was Jonas Brothers. Well, when I, when when um I was doing making the band, and I was absolutely in like turmoil with Puff, and I got a call from <laughs> Sony, and they said we have this little boy, and he's 12, 13, and he's doing Good Morning America, and he's singing a Christmas song, and um, we want you to work with his stage presence. And I was like, okay, anything to get me out of freaking yeah. making the bad, right? Yeah. So I went to the meeting and it was baby um, Joe and his dad. And he was so young and so talented. And it could sing his little face off. And I remember the dad looked at me and he was like, long story short, I have two other sons and you know, I just want to protect my son from this business. And I said, okay, okay, okay. Well, maybe I can ask Johnny Wright to come down and manage you. That's all I can offer because he's an amazing manager. And he had NSYNC, Britney, and the Backstreet Boys at the time. And he was managing Puff yep. and doing the Making the Band series with me. Yep. Well, Johnny stood me up like fucking three times and was making me look crazy. So I was like, okay, Dad, well, bring the other boys down to rehearsal. Let them rehearse. I'll figure it out. So the other boys came down, and I was like, in my mind, I was like, oh my God, they're baby Rolling Stone. Like, I just started letting them work together and finding that chemistry, and they had it as brothers. But, but it's you different like the, when the you can coach. Right. It's but, different yes. when you but see you just the end. Stage yeah, the, it's right, different okay. when you see the end at the beginning. Yeah. Yes. Right? right? And now you're moving that, people yeah. into the actual dream, yeah. and you're seeing their gift, and you're creating a muscle of truth. Right? Right. Just like Phil Jackson did. Right. With the freaking... Right, balls. Exactly. Balls, yeah. But when I do it, you don't want to understand it. Right. Cool. Johnny stood me up, so I went to his assistant, Phil McIntyre. I think that's how I pronounce your name, Phil. I said, Phil, if you want to be like Johnny, come to my rehearsal. Please help me out. I just didn't want to embarrass myself because I loved Dad so, so much. much. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't want the boys to be disappointed. And I'm a very faithful child. Right. And the father told me that he prayed over the reels. There were several reels, and he picked mine. So that's all you had to tell me. I was like, oh, yeah. thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And anything positive, yes. a juxtaposition yeah. to Sean Pop Daddy Combs right. at the time. Time, mm -hmm. I was just thirsting for yeah, yeah. a different creative Take the, process. Right, right. So Phil was like, okay, I'll come. So Phil came. Of course, he saw them. And he said, okay, I'll help you out. So he then went back to Johnny and he sold them. He agreed to take on the boys. So I, I, I stayed with the boys, created them, did Disney, blue, blue, blue. And all I remember is it kept blowing up. It kept blowing up. And I remember one time they they... They were touring in the round, and I jumped on the private jet, and all I knew 
is that I was reading an article where they just got paid like $121 million or something like that. And I'm looking at Phil, and he doesn't even want to cut the check I'm asking for. Wow. That's insane. And I was like, devastated. And after that, I never got to work with my boys again. Yeah. That's crazy. They started moving in lesser well, than everybody, me. Well, you know, everybody. And I happy, understand like, it now. And I'm so not saying that money, I'm you know? shitting yeah. on anybody. I'm saying that's my truth. Right. Yeah. And yeah, that's the you, warrior's but truth. That's, but the, no, because I'll but tell don't you, you just what. I think that's so basic in this business. I will that, tell you this. In my vision, right. Those fans may have been screaming, but those fans were still the friends from day one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes when you don't disconnect artists from their true creative muse, we don't know what those fans will be looking like right now. Right. Well, they're, they're really, a composite wow. of all the lessons they learned from all wow. the people that they learned from all but the But my, my, my theory is they would still be hotter. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay? right. But that's just me. Right. But I'm just saying that to say that is... Not a bad story, and not to shit yeah. on Phil or no, anything, but I get, no, you, I get what yeah. book you were right. reading. This no, is the book right. I had to yeah. write. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And love you. Totally. Love yeah, I think, you, but... you know what? I think, like, to me, it's like there's two places. Like, it, you'll see all these people come, oh, yeah, we, we had creative differences. We had creative differences. I, I, I feel like the bulk of the time, it's people aren't getting the love that they feel they deserve or they rightfully do deserve. Right, but I'm right. saying, and it's in fin financials, or it's in credit, right? Well, or it's at least also respect in, and support. If you manage greatness, yeah. you have to know how to manage greatness. Yeah. Right. To me, right. that only showed me that he wasn't like the greats, Ahmed Edigan, right, 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 Clyde right, Davis, right, right. Period, or the right. managers Period. that manage right. greatness. Right. Right. Don't get me wrong. There are some people in this business that are thoroughbreds and incredibly right, right, magic right. or managers and will allow you to continue to turn over what you do naturally and you are protected and managed to stay in what I call the pink elephant suit when you're creating, right? Yeah, right. That's important to me. I don't want to manage. I want to be managed with the whole entire right, right, creative right, right, process. Right. Gotcha. And as long as you're feeding the greatness. Right. And you're not, obviously there are rules to this game. Yes, I am not disrespectful, I am never late. I do not color outside yeah. my lines. I don't do what I don't do. I stay in my lane, like I'm gonna tell you what I do. I'm gonna make it and that's it. And my receipts prove it. Where's the respect? So now we're teaching our artists these, to respond to the like, ego versus the greatness, right, to the course, play. Yeah. But don't you we're think that just happens, that. it evolves that way. Like would you say, so that's a scenario that happens with the Jonas Brothers? What's a scenario that happens with Gaga, who you work with for probably even longer, right? Oh yeah, from the beginning to right. The but end. did yeah. it does? Did they feel like? Does it feel like you go? Oh, patterns emerge, or does it feel like every dynamic, every relationship is slightly different? That and yes, there were perhaps patterns, which is why I also checked my process. Right. Okay. Gotcha. You have now, to. Now right? you have to. Right. One thousand yeah. percent. I try to do that with all my relationships, you know. In the past, like I'm like, well, some patterns have emerged, you know. Yeah. And, you got to check. You know, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's perfect. Yeah. Newsflash. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And course, guess course. what? Greatness comes at a cost. You're not going to walk into a room every day and everybody's going to get along when you're fighting for an original. Oh, a hundred percent. When you're coming from nobody knows your name, our names, yeah. the vision to 55 million albums sold. Who yeah. thinks that there's not going to be creative combustion? Yeah. Right? Of course. We yeah. have so much they're, toxicity they're on entourage. They're it's, like, it's they're crazy. ignorant. Good oh, fight in that writer's room. Yeah, it's bananas. how you yeah. manage it, support it, and yeah. protect it, right? Now, no, listen, I love Gogs. I haven't spoken to her, but I love her the same today that I did yesterday. Right. We, magic, muse, couldn't touch us. The particular people around her. Yeah. Right. It's always the people. They around. wanted mm -hmm. to. I don't trust that dog walker, bro. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm <joking>. That part. <laughs> separate us. I didn't even know that there was like power in what I did. We didn't even think like that. We were two women. Because you were right. that so Yeah, that we didn't want to go back to the 
are you like, are I, I like Lady Gaga. Gaga. I'm not like a, yeah. I'm oh not like a crazy Gaga fan, but I do. I since I did reference the dog walker, I do have to go on record and say it. It's very fucking strange that this guy gets shot protecting her dogs and then he had to set up a GoFundMe page. Yeah, I don't, it seems not on my watch. Yeah, because yeah, I'd be yeah. like, you know, Gaga, it. you probably yeah. got a Hyundai you could throw the Listen, guy. Yeah. Not on my watch. I would have walked, in, I your walked yeah. my yeah. dog, you her fucking... dog myself. I'm but saying, but you, know, there's always you gotta more check people so around you. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But again, uh, there is a, I, I think, just as, as powerful as we are creatively, there is another energy that wants to monetize that has no true understanding of the process. And one thing that you can do with a creative person is if you get them in the corner of insecurity or you get them questioning their instincts, right? you can mani- manipulate oh, that. Oh, 100%. And I call that the Easily. leech factor. Yeah. Yeah. So when there's leeches, they need to keep you yeah. chasing your tail in order to be needed. Yeah. And a lot of people can't see past that. And, and it is- You know how you free up from that? There's only one. For, there's only one way. Is you go. You know what? I might fail. I don't give a fuck. Get the fuck out of my face. Like that is the. Or only when you are around yes again, those... when you're around yes again. Oh, but yeah. the if yes mother against... is telling you no, just go on record and trust the no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. trust the no. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's yeah, I think it's different stages and no. different phases of the career. But I agree with that. Well, if also, someone's been with you since the beginning, the trust people, the, no. the people trust that no. gaslight you. And make you question whether or not you're good enough, those things, or maybe you lost it, or maybe it's just not. I think like the best thing for you to do is to be open to the experience of failure and to trust your own instincts. I think we're saying the same thing. That's right. That would come to me going, well, you know what, this is what I feel like I'm going to do, and you might be right, it might be the wrong move. Yeah, but you were affected by people that knew your greatness and wanted you to fail. Now, if you had right. a me in your life, like if I was on yeah. your arm, motherfucker, yeah. we would have Well, I mean, I fucked up my whole career. Hello. I, 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 was a, I was. We would have. In the 90s, <laughs> 90s, 90s into 2000, I was a famous cautionary tale for young filmmakers because I just didn't exercise the opportunities I had, you know? Because there was so much insecurity in my head. I had such a shitty support system well if you won by your standards it could have shook the narrative and you did and it's still shaking the narrative right so great let's pick it up from there yeah but the point is that's a true fight and i think to talk about it like we're talking about it gives a young artist perspective of course because if i had an option i probably would have left gogs a lot earlier because i wouldn't have wanted it to go like that if i knew it was those clowns if someone tapped me on my shoulder like you're actually doing this to them and you're causing this in their ecosystem i would have been like let me go so i don't lose my relationship with my baby. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Let me be mother. Right. Yes. right. Yeah. Okay. That's true. And let her get some clarity before it's too late. Because yeah. God bless the artists that are so in it. Right. That there is a. It's not easy. And well, I the, love them. And I gotta it, if tell I've you. I've been confused as a young filmmaker. That's right. You could only imagine what that's Lady right. Gaga. Oh, geez. yeah. Like, I got so one. Or a lot I got of one ring around me. Yeah. yeah. That exactly. Got got a thousand, it's man. the music yeah. industry yeah. too. Yeah. And so you know, I I pride myself in working with superstars and great ones because I understand it. Right. I understand that this is not easy. Right. So I can carry the hardest, most difficult superstars. Right. I'm like, my brother comes to mind because their greatness <laughs> is really me. comes with a lot. Yeah. Of and course. And just like, but I that, always but Don't go you back- think that's also part of what, what we're in right now too? And I'm not talking about people who are like sex, fucking sexual assault and people that are just fucking disgusting animals. But don't you think the artistic idiosyncrasies or better, better said, the idiosyncrasies that go with some of these amazing talents, everything is under a microscope now and open for exploitation. Yeah, but you know what? Be- but they're artists. Like, why Why can't you just appreciate their music? Why does it have to be about it's hard for their sexuality? It's hard for some people to separate those two worlds. You right. know what I mean? It's like... But, but they're like, you know what I mean? Like, if you, right now, if you had, like, a guy who is, like... A super bad tipper, right? I mean, it's a stupid fucking concept, but let's just say <laughs> a huge star, super bad tipper. Uh-huh. It's like that shit would be everywhere. He's the worst fucking tipper. Do you know how hard servers work? You don't take it, like, you don't fully know the narrative of how broke he was. 
That's and how right. in his head he fears he's going to be broke again, shit yeah. like that yeah, kind of shit. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's but levels. do you go? Oh, he's an eccentric, crazy artist. The you know filmmaker, musician, whatever the fuck it is. I just feel like now we look as a culture for the one thing we could find on everybody. We magnify and just try to yeah. fucking like an find Achilles the one heel, flaw and, and just, just keep trying to chop them down. But you know what? Down, it has always down. been heavy as the crown, right? Right. Or right. and so now true, that true. the the pendulum has swung there, right. yes. Yeah. If you were in public eye, sorry. Right. That's just the kickball change. Right, right, right. Figure it out. Right. So then, right. Right. So so then it now goes to the other thing I we said, can, well, you got to go, it's okay, I'll yeah, fail. If that's exactly, what exactly. Moving. So right. now we can balance it out because I right. will tell you what's going to rise out of that pressure. Is what? Is real talent. Yeah. What's but gonna is rise? It, is at, it really gonna rise? Out look at look, yeah, because uh, yeah, I'm uh, still I'm gonna always. know how to circumvent it. Dave Chappelle, right. greatest yeah, comedian, he, to, like yeah, but he's period. but he had risen twenty years ago and will and continue to rise. Is, uh, yes, but because uh, of listen, the gift. I'm a huge Chappelle his, fan. His, <laughs> but he was already a huge star pre all of these okay, movements. Totally. And he has been on the chopping block for fucking okay, year and a half still, over this year. But what shit. I'm talking yeah. about is not the trajectory. I'm talking about right. the innate. Ability yeah. to get a message yes, across. I'm yes. talking right. about yes. the choice. Communication. One yes. makes. Right. So now that you you messed us up by not telling the truth about some things and creating the balance, the pendulum is all the way over here where you're right. Shoot, we can't say nothing. This is insane. But greatness will well, rise I, I because just, we will figure yeah. out how to say what's necessary because that's where true talent That's cool lays. too. Listen, yes. you know, I, I mean, I remember like my first movies like Fuck This, Fuck That, which by the way, I still drop F-bombs all the time, but I remember my dad who was also an F-bomb expert would be like, oh, you can't figure <laughs> out another way to get your point across without saying fuck, you know what I mean? Great but, art form so, to but, it. But it's the same thing. That's prior. a microcosm of what you're saying because what you're saying is like, there is a better language to get your point, your vision. That's right your voice, all these things across, and we will rise to do it. Yeah. My whole thing, all that I'm kind of bumping back against mm -hmm. is making sure we don't kill the babies, the talent, before they blossom because of dumb fucking things they do. You know what I mean? Or the mistakes they make or, or the but we idiosyncrasies had to, they we have. We had to be responsible for the process. Right. And that's why I talk about the process a lot. Because in the process, it really does perfect those instincts. Right. And so when we teach them that there's an overnight success, right. that's not a good narrative. That narrative is going to have its own complications yeah i was in it right? I, yeah. I saw it, how yeah. can you take yes you can't take how can you take process. someone walking on the street right. throw them in the nba and expect them to go up against a true system right. an art right. form yeah. right. okay just want to know how can you take someone off the street i mean and not floyd mayweather in a you know, and put them in the ring right. with a world-class fighter you're going to get your ass kicked perhaps right. you may right. even die right so in our business there are greats i mean Debbie Allen, I stand on the shoulder of great. Yeah, yeah. Whitney Houston, I work with. You would die if Michael, G you went in the room. You will still die if you go in the room with Janet Jackson. This right. art, this yes. Elvis, these, I mean, you will, true art, it's a whole judge. Yeah. Another level. So I think we rob a truly gifted artist of an option to a stronger narrative because there's one thing about my younger artists that I know and the people I'm working with that will be global superstars shortly. They want it the real way because when right. they sing, they feel connected to what I'm saying. Right. And when they see the results, I have an 18 year old girl right now that, that is going to be the next Britney Spears, a global pop star. When she connected to the methodology, she didn't want to be on Instagram talking about makeup. She says, why can't I be on this Instagram talking about my music? Right. I was like, yeah. we just got to figure out how to feed it. Right. Right? When she felt what she dreamed of feeling as a result of the process, you can't tell her nothing. Right. Mm. The joy, the strength. It goes back it, to authenticity. And yeah. it goes you back to. Fake, you can't fake a, a real feeling. You can't yeah. fake like. You can digitally download fucking, a record. Yeah. You can't no, download yeah. a feeling yeah. Yeah. or Emotions, an experience. Yeah. experience. You either got somebody the takes you there, Bowl. voice takes yep. you there, vision takes there. There yeah. doesn't, you know. I mean, Harry Styles. I, I mean, Come on. love that guy. Before he is. Sugar. He did that. Right. Exactly. There's evidence of it in their generation. We just have to show them the difference. 
difference. Yep. Right. That yeah. a Harry Styles has done the work. That's why you like him. He's on right. fire. Yeah. But that's why you like him. Maybe. And he knows who people are. Right. Yeah. I bumped into Harry Styles backstage when I was doing Katy yeah. Perry. He knew. He knew. That makes a and, difference. And, and, and that's yeah. the difference. Cardi B makes a difference. They know. Committed. What, what, yeah, committed. Committed. Because this, this generation don't know. They don't do the homework. They don't study. Oh, my God. Yo, it's the sake of saying. I'm not even going to put people on blast, man. I've sat put down Put them on actors. blast. We're here I've at the Cray. I've sat down with actors in their 20s be... and like, just go through like, the, like yeah, I'm working. I, you know, I really want to act in this kind of movie or I want to do that. I'm like, did you ever see this? No. No. Do you know who this is? No. no. I'm like, bro, you, you need to go fucking do your homework. Do your homework. Just watch me. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's like. They could say all the guys from my generation, like, oh, he's a Scorsese ripoff, Scorsese ripoff. You know what I mean? It was like, well, yeah, we did our homework. I want to end with this. I want, I want, I want Lorianne to come back. I want to Wait, come I back. Do I, do want to I don't want to forever. leave. Josh. I don't want to leave. Big shout she's out to the Josh. She's the fucking coolest, man, and she's so Josh. deep and so real. I do have some gifts for you guys. Do you? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Thanks, Josh. Oh, this is Joshua Gibson Bascom in the building. Sweet. Yeah. If I read my this, CEO. am I going to be a good dancer? If you, you gotta, read you gotta, you gotta this, sign them to yes. if you read this, I don't want to tell you what's gonna happen. I, I got, I got a flat head. I could do that better. Oh my god! That's why it. I always wear hats. You know, like part you of the head's head? missing. Yeah, really? No. Okay. So <laughs> I'm really super proud of this. Dance your dance. Amazing. Did you sign to mine? To unleash me? your passion I and live your sign, dream. Yes. And you know what? Amazing. This is for the young dreamer, honestly. And you can see, like, some of my artists have wrote such incredible things on the back. Alicia Keys, Sean Diddy Combs. It really is quick eight steps to remind you that your dance is like no one else's. It just isn't. Yeah. And how do you wake up when you face a world that says everything that you instinctually feel is not good enough? Right. That you're off rhythm, that your steps don't matter. I can speak to that. Because yeah, I love you. You're it. inspiring as fuck. Yeah, like, I've you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Lori, really you're just, amazing. We're very, so, very, we're so very, thankful very, to have you here to hang out with us today. Well, you we and Magic been through. gotta we come back through. again. Look at Magic. Oh, we magic naps throughout most of the interview. Lori Ann kicked me now. down <laughs> on the ground once. Biggie, God bless dead Biggie. We had a rental car. We got in an argument. Oh, it was the weekend. Biggie got killed. Yeah. Puff, Biggie, everybody's outside. I'm trying to get the car back from Lori Ann. Lori Ann opens the door. Karate chops me in my chest, and I just look back. <laughs> no, at because I was dating Andre, who, by the way, we had to share a car. We had to share a How car. are you dating Andre? I know that's your nephew, but why are we sharing a car? You cheap, rest in peace. Yeah. Love you, AA. Yeah. How does the girl not have her the, own car? Are you gonna car? come to the seance? Yes, I'm coming to the party. Okay, no, we're gonna do a. Uh, no, we're gonna do. We're gonna do. We're gonna. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna Andre's coming. Oh my god. Which no, no. not to like we're doing oh, it for the show. show up. He will. Oh. We're going to do a cray seance and summon Andre Harrell at some point. <sighs> yeah. So you have to be there. You gotta come back. And every, you could tell him about that. You could tell. I him just got chills. He's that. actually yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Of course he's here. But we we just need right now. No, he's here. But we just need the medium to be able to decipher. There's gonna be a medium. Lies and fairy tales. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Oh, so good. Beck Lover met this dude on Clubhouse. The short period of time I was on Clubhouse. Okay. I remember I was in my driveway one day. It was working out, like a fucking lifting weights. And then this guy comes in this Clubhouse room, starts breaking down religion. And there were, there were a couple hundred people in there, and everybody just shut the fuck up. He really laid out. I'm like, this is a smart dude. Came out to LA, came hanging with me and Sean and the crew. I think he met you yep, too. Yep. All of us had cigars. Fucking love him. Controversial figure. The unanointed king of Albanian nightlife. Albanian nightlife. <laughs> yes. In New York. King Could give him New a platform? <laughs> give, him, give him a platform? Because they said he said that they've 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 cut him off at the knees on his own platform for being controversial. I'm like, bro, give it to us. I now ate up two of your ten minutes. You got eight minutes to riff. And if it sucks, it'll be two minutes with back level. Let's see what you got, baby. First and foremost, thanks for having me, guys. It's good to see you. I didn't get the fucking memo about the hats, I guess. You yeah, know, you know. I never understood why all the people that have hair wear hats and the motherfuckers like us that don't have hat you know don't have good hair don't oh, I, don't, I don't i don't have hair i know but you probably have a beautiful head no yeah <laughs> i look like somebody hit me in the fucking head with a sludge hammer <laughs> in any event i'm back in la a lot sooner than i thought and a lot sooner than i wanted to be i yeah. thought new york was bad until i came here with this whole fucking you know crazy pandemic yeah, yeah, that we're going through yep. you know i gave up gambling a long time ago right i learned very quickly i wasn't good at it and i've seen a lot of fucking people go down right but now the government's forcing us to gamble with the most precious thing we got, our fucking children. Hey, let's give them a little bit of... 
<laughs> Are my kid gonna get fucking swollen hard? Are they gonna fucking get a blood clot? Are they gonna fucking make it to fucking? So uh, yeah, you know, we live in interesting times. Yeah. Interesting times indeed, my friend. You know. But what do you think, for real? Like, I, I know well, I you think, have thoughts on the the vaccinations. Think, yeah, what are your kids vaccinated? Because I'll tell you something. I ran for the vaccine. I got the vaccine with him. There's three groups. There's anti-vax. I don't believe in any vaccination. There's no logic to that, right? See, they're trying to group everybody in one group. No. Yeah. There's anti-vax, which I don't want nothing. I don't want to, like, you know, polio shot, none of that stuff. Then you got your give me anything, just put it in me, fuck it, whatever happens, happens. Right. Right. Those are very brave people. Right. I love them. And then there's the third group. I do believe in vaccination. I do have vaccines. I have all of them except for the flu shot. And I just don't feel comfortable with this one. So how the fuck does that make me an anti-vax? I don't like this one. I was there when it got hit. The aftermath was horrible, but New York was in much better shape than it's not. There's no people trying to compare, like, oh, we got to nine. Like, this is what has happened to New York City, and what I'm seeing has happened to your city, because I was here before all this started, right? There's no correlation. Like, this yeah. is like some Twilight Zone shit, right? But for me, the aftermath after what happened there, right? Two weeks later, I was at Pace University, right, right across the street from City Hall, two blocks from the World Trade Center. You know, that's the one time I really, I should have wore a mask. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't. I was young. I was stupid. My point here is this. I did get concerned. So eventually I ended up leading a walkout at the college. The whole college walked out. I said, this air is not safe for us. It's not safe to breathe. Make the story short. The EPA comes in. The president, his name was Caputo at the time. He was the president of Patient University. We all sit down and they all say, listen, we're testing the air. There's HEPA filters. You guys are safe. Do not worry about this. You guys are good. Well, what happened? Ladies and gentlemen, 10 years later, we weren't fucking good. So many people are getting fucking cancer, emphysema. We trusted the EPA. We trusted them we, with our health, right? You're safe to breathe this air. And it wasn't fucking safe. And now there's a multi-billion dollar fund. But you think I give a fuck about, I mean, if you just lost your dad to cancer or your mom because she worked down there, she thought the air was safe. Do you really give a shit about this money? You can't put a price on your fucking family, man. You can't put a price on the people you love. People go, why don't you? Because they've already fucking fucked up yeah. in my life. Yeah. I already was right. exposed yeah, to something. God knows what's going to happen to me. The kid, the kid, the kid yeah. thing is fucking, it's weird, man. It's very weird. So it's for me, it's weird. like. They're not, they're not, you know, listen, I don't want any kids to get sick. Sick kids is probably the single scariest fucking thing for any human being to hear about. Yeah. Just, particularly somebody who has a kid, they yeah. understand the, the depths of that, but... But I mean, uh, it's like once it's done, know, it's done. Like there's no, yeah. you're you're going back. so it's like well, it's just such a new vaccine. Like I said, I don't mind you experimenting on me a little bit. My body's been put through ringers. I, I drank for fucking 25 years, so yeah. I mean, not like an animal, but I drank enough, put enough toxins and poisons yeah. in my body that I'd be really standing on some kind of fucking high soapbox to be like, I'm not taking yeah. that. I'm like, I'm pure. Yeah, yeah you know I just I mean? feel weird about kids. I have, I have a five year old and a four month old four month old and my, my four month old she came early and so the doctors told us at some point we would have to give her blood so they, they tested her blood and when it came back we, our blood was a match and so I went to the blood bank at Cedars I gave blood then I, I then they, they got a letter saying that I couldn't give her blood because I had the vaccine in my blood yeah it's crazy and, they, uh, yeah, and, they, and, and I couldn't give my obviously. kid blood so we had to take blood but now blood they're talking from... about giving the vaccine to kids yeah, so yeah, yeah, like, like, what the fuck my whole thing is this brother my son's school I can show you guys the email if you want or you can screenshot it 95% staff 85% of the student body has the jab. the jab they're masked they're still having outbreaks my son is not I'm not making this shit up the kids that had it they were so that's not the answer either obviously it's not stopping it from happening right. so why does there have to be this force that's the whole thing why you why we if it's not listen, it's I'll not gonna the, cure it I'll be the first no. dude I'll be I'll, listen I know when I took a fucking polio shot I could jump into a fucking pool full of polio I ain't getting it it's a little bit different man right yeah, yeah. So if this shit eradicated well, this is like a flu vaccine, you yeah, can still yeah. get a different strain. Of yeah, the flu, if it eradicated yeah. it, I'd be like, all right, you know what? You have some. Yeah, they, 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 you listen, have they, some they leg change. to stand on where you can say everyone's got to do it. Bro, they yeah. bait and switched. A hundred percent. I'm not. I'm no, not. I'm not totally anti-government, and I'm not a conspiracy no, theorist. That's, no, that's, but, but they when you be, say, hey, if we get to seventy percent vaccinations, we're gonna have herd immunity. <laughs> the virus is gonna go away, and it never went away. So because the virus, so you lose everyone's trust by doing that, and then you can't like now you're making it worse. All right, everybody, go, go. 
follow Beck Lover on Beck Instagram. B E K Lover N Y C because I'm censored. Before you said where you going? Where you going? Dallas, Miami. Where you heading? I'm actually gonna head back to New York for for because we have some big events. You know, I haven't been at the rooftop over there. Shout out to somewhere nowhere, the highest elevated rooftop in New York City. Rooftop. When you guys come, we make a fucking. But everyone knows you start your night and you end your night at Bathtub Jimbo. Shout out to the Bathtub. I love the fucking greatest fucking place. I love that fucking.